sudden cardiac arrest, the silent killer in our midst. I don't want to sound morbid and certainly not at this time of the year when everyone is in such a festive mood. However, there is a silent killer. And though it's not limited to men, it's taken out mostly men of African descent. And it has nothing to do with age, physical fitness, or even underlying medical condition. Sudden cardiac arrest. While some people may experience symptoms such as racing heartbeat or feeling dizzy, alerting them that a potentially dangerous heart rhythm problem has started. In over half of the cases, it occurs without prior symptoms. In the past few years, a number of prominent Nigerians, such as Digi Tenumbu, Stephen Keshi, Ibiduni Igudalu, Uguchuku Ehiogu, Nigerian-born ex-England international footballer, to mention a few, have succumbed to it and died. Recently, in the international arena, the Danish footballer Christian Eriksen suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. Thankfully, he survived due to the prompt attention he received. He's doing well, and though banned from playing in Syria R, he's planning to resume his career. Unfortunately, because of a lack of awareness and education, most people in Nigeria are not so lucky. I can talk from experience because my husband died of sudden cardiac arrest in 2014. He wasn't sick. He was shooting pool when he suddenly went down. No one did anything because no one knew what to do. SCA is not the same as a heart attack. Without sounding too clinical, in a heart attack, the heart stops beating. In contrast, sudden cardiac arrest occurs when the electrical system to the heart malfunctions, just like your car, and suddenly becomes irregular and blood is not delivered to the body. In the first few minutes, the greatest concern is that blood flow to the brain will be reduced so drastically that a person will lose consciousness. Death follows unless emergency treatment is begun immediately. So, how can we reduce the risk? Though it usually gives no warning, there are certain lifestyle changes you can make to reduce your risk of sudden cardiac arrest. These lifestyle changes include you quit smoking, lose weight, exercise regularly, follow a low-fat diet, managing your underlying health conditions, including high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, and so on. What should you do if you witness sudden cardiac arrest? Immediately, you initiate CPR, that's cardiopulmonary resuscitation. If done properly, CPR can save a person's life as the procedure keeps blood and oxygen circulating through the body until help arrives. If there is an AED, that's an automated external defibrillator available, the best chance of, of rescuing that person includes defibrillator with that, defibrillation rather, with that device. The shorter the time until defibrillation, the greater the chance the person will survive. In the first few minutes, there's actually a 75 to 90 percent chance of survival. After that, the chances reduce by 10% for every minute, which means in 10 minutes, a person could be dead. If CPR plus defibrillation, or it is CPR plus defibrillation that saves a person, it's far better to do something than to do nothing at all. If you are fearful that your knowledge or abilities aren't 100% complete. Remember, the difference between you're doing something and doing nothing could be somebody's life. The person is already dead or dying, so you can't kill them. You can't do worse. So please do something. Uh, uh, I must say that's really moved me. Um, it is, it's, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm emotional. I'm speechless. But um, I do, um, Please, people come and do CPR. <laughs> so that we, I mean, I don't know no, what to say. You know, I mean, hearing it from that point, you know, I've known Daily for a while, and I know when her husband died. But you know, 
it's only when you go through Something. the emotions to recall mm -hmm. that you actually know a oh, person is dead is dead mm -hmm. you had a heart attack and you're like so what but when you really look at what could have you're happened done. to prevent it you ask yourself did the person really need to die do you, you know, know that does. in nigeria we don't even have defibrillators especially in places where we should have them even in most hospitals it's amazing you just go and check out your local hospital yeah, they, do. they do not have defibrillators so what happens someone is dying they don't even but, try to shock your heart back but the truth of the matter is that <laughs> cpr is not part of the medical training it's done after you become a doctor in nigeria so are, are not sure yes so, not, so you're saying that well, some doctors don't even be, have it i don't no. think it has to be um no administered only, only by, by doctors absolutely yes. school, children are being taught yes, they're being taught yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so I'm, oh yes I, I, growing up in school okay all through my elementary education days i don't recall ever being put through that the cpr procedure and up to now i don't know how to do it it was when what happened with chris and everything yeah. that i saw how powerful that could go how 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 important it is in some situation to to save life so, I mean, uh, it's something that we, there has to be... Uh, it has to be, has to be uh, I'll give you an example. Contact to issue of awareness and, mm. and through the school system, Same through church system, so people can ask, you know how to do sure. I'll give you an example. I had a training of my own personal staff. One guy, we were doing CPR training. He was there playing up and down, laughing, da, da, da. Another guy participating. Two weeks later... The guy that was laughing up and down, yeah. his mom had a heart attack. And he, he didn't know what to do. do. Oh, wow. She died. Wow. The one that was concentrating, his neighbor had a heart attack and he was able to administer CPR. And he's alive today. Wow. CPR is something wow. that that's everyone... That, that's boy will feel sorry. It will feel bad. He called Especially and he because like a baby. He could have done something. He could have done something. He could have done something. And we all can do something. You should start That's where education training, education. Education, education and awareness. Education and awareness. Awareness. Well, so, if, want to find out if it was intentional, you wouldn't have... Uh, does it also have a genetic... But when you look at the causative factors, is genetics part of... Some I people mean, have a higher chance. Like, a so, like, I, when you look at all the people that I mentioned, they're all different. Mm. Look at Ericsson, for yeah. instance. You cannot it's say it's he had a sedentary lifestyle. No. He's it's a footballer. Well, like he must have gone through the highest form of, of medical, medical training. training, training. And, yes. Yes. and then you look at Deji Tunumbu, who was a sports person. Mm -hmm. I think that what is clear is that most of the time, when these things happen in Nigeria, people just don't know what to do because they are ill-equipped, yes, they're right. uninformed, mm. and they lack awareness. They start running around mm. or... What still, people mill around the person. They're just looking at you, depriving you of the much-needed oxygen and people. not doing anything. Or because it happens so suddenly, because one minute you're just going about your business, the next minute you're yeah. on the floor. People, people are taken Take unaware, back, yes. and they just don't know that do, they should do, do some, something. I give an example. I had a very good friend. He died in the gym. Uh -huh. He had a small, small, like, a, you know, yeah. And that was it. By the time he got to the hospital, he said he had a cardiac arrest. Wow. And he was in the Do you know what I cannot understand? I don't understand how... I mean, I know we see it in the movies. They always try to shock your heart back. And that's what the defibrillator that's the is. Defibrillator, it's supposed yes. to run electric current charge to your hand yes. and charge it and get it pumping again because it can. It, does. it can. It does. We saw it with Ericsson. It does, yeah. But in Nigeria, they just look at you mm. and uh, oh, he's gone. he's gone. They never try they never to try. bring you back. And I don't know why. Even the movies, even the Nigerian movies, the same movie. Yeah, the doctor will just come when, and put that When thing. you watch Hollywood, they will use electric... Uh, that yes, was was and there. most times you see them and when come back. And when is, is gone. God. So it's yeah, reflective of what happens. Yeah, but in Nigeria, as we said as last week, I lost my stepfather. He had a cardiac arrest. Uh -huh. wow. And I'm, I'm very, sure very sure that if he had gotten to the hospital on time and they had you know what they did and he went to he went to a heart clinic a heart hospital and they didn't uh -huh. Uh -huh. i mean i think that government needs to put certain policies in place where schools hospitals churches anywhere where people congregate where a certain number of people gather yeah they need are airports I don't think there's any mm. in our airports. Anyway, I mean, no, our no, general airports. hospital has <laughs> one. Anyway, one. I, I think that will, first of all, let me appreciate you for having the courage to see this. Mm. You know, you are, it's quite sad you lost your husband. I'm yeah. sorry. Really and he didn't to have to die because he was 48. He, he was young. He continued to rest, yeah. but you are trying to make a meaning to his death. Absolutely. I don't think he should do just that. Absolutely. From yeah. it. 
And yes. so, so let's mm. all learn mm. as Nigerians. Let's all just learn to improve ourselves. Let's yes. do something. Yes. I, I think lifestyle is also so, one of the best safeguards. Yes, lifestyle yeah, changes. Yes, yes lifestyle changes. Change. Change. Instead of spending smoking, time to scream spending when something, time something time like this happens, oh, everybody mm. this and that, try to put your foot in And in all fairness, you know, her sister owns a very a good school in Lagos and every year in fact she's like when am I doing your CPR when are you doing come and do um, your Training. your your basic life support you know she's oh every year yeah. I get her timetable mm. which is screening of the children and first aid training okay. she doesn't you, I, I, I know it's because of personal experience yeah. but I also do know that it's the right thing to do mm. it is the right thing to do Absolutely. It's right. Just shortly before you go, is there a particular reason why the men are more prevalent? Yes. Prevalent. Why is it so common? Among? Honestly, I don't know. And bear in mind, I'm not a medical personnel, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe we need a doctor to come. And it's not just like they're prevalent with men. Yeah. It's more yeah. prevalent yeah. with yeah. African yeah. men. Yeah. And do you know that more people die from sudden cardiac arrest in America than, than any, any other disease? Yeah. yeah. But we lack awareness. Yes, that's yeah. the major killer, killer, natural cause of death yeah. in the entire world. Yeah. And we don't know. Yeah. After the break, Elijah wraps up this conversation. And I'm looking forward to that. So stay tuned. Yeah.